Hello fellow Canadians and welcome to our channel, I'm Daniel and today we're diving into some breaking news that could significantly impact millions across our beautiful country. If you're a Canada Pension Plan CPP recipient or a senior citizen, you'll want to pay close attention because we've got some exciting information to share. On July 1st, a date we all know and love as Canada Day, there's a big surprise coming your way. We're talking about not one, not two, but three substantial payments that could be heading to your bank account. These payments are $2,600, $1,650, Now, I know what you're thinking this sounds too good to be true, well stick with me because we're going to break down everything you need to know about these payments. Whether you're a retiree approaching retirement age or have loved ones who might benefit from this information, this video is for you. In the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to cover the details of each payment and what they mean for you, who's eligible and how to check if you qualify, the process of receiving these funds, how these payments fit into the broader picture of retirement planning in Canada, and some smart ways to make the most of this unexpected boost to your income. Before we dive in, I want to remind you that financial information can change and it's always best to verify details with official government sources. We'll provide links to the relevant websites in the description below. So grab a cup of coffee, get comfortable, and let's unpack this exciting news together. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more updates on Canadian financial matters and retirement planning tips. Let's start by breaking down each of these payments and what they could mean for CPP recipients and Canadian seniors. The $2,600 payment is the largest of the three, and it's certainly an attention grabber. To put this into perspective, $2,600 is more than double the current maximum monthly CPP retirement pension for 2024, which stands at $1,306.57 for those who start receiving it at age 65. While we don't have official confirmation, it's possible that this could be a one-time boost to help seniors cope with rising living costs. Canada, like many countries, has been experiencing higher inflation rates in recent years, which can be particularly challenging for those on fixed incomes. This payment could potentially be a response to these economic pressures, providing a significant boost to help cover expenses like increased food costs, higher utility bills, and rising healthcare expenses not covered by provincial plans. It's important to note that $2,600 is a substantial amount that could make a real difference in many seniors' lives. For some, it might cover several months of rent or mortgage payments. For others, it could be an opportunity to catch up on delayed home repairs or medical procedures. Moving on to our second payment, we have $1,650. This is still a significant amount, roughly equivalent to the maximum monthly old-age security OAS pension $713.34 4 of January 2024 plus the maximum guaranteed income supplement geese for a single person $1,026.96.96. What could this payment represent? There are a few possibilities. It could be an additional supplement to the OAs and GIs programs, recognizing that even with these supports, many seniors struggle to make ends meet. This payment might be targeted at a specific group of seniors, perhaps those with lower incomes or those facing particular challenges. Alternatively, it could be part of a new initiative to support seniors' healthcare costs, possibly covering things like dental care, vision care, or mobility aids that aren't typically included in provincial health plans. Remember, $1,650 is nothing to sneeze at. For many seniors, this could represent several months of groceries, a significant portion of annual property taxes, or the cost of essential home modifications to improve safety and accessibility. Last but certainly not least, we have the $900 payment. While it's the smallest of the three, it's still a substantial amount that could make a big difference in many people's lives. To put this in context, $900 is more than the current maximum monthly CPP survivor's pension for those under 65, which is $707.95-5 of 2024. What could this payment be for? It might be an across-the-board boost to all CPP recipients, regardless of the type of benefit they receive retirement, disability, survivors, etc. This could be a targeted payment for a specific group, such as low-income seniors or those with disabilities. It might also be designed to offset specific costs that seniors face, such as increased transportation expenses or the need for additional home care services. $900 could help many seniors with expenses like a month's rent in many parts of Canada, several months of utility bills, or the cost of necessary medical equipment not covered by provincial health plans. It's crucial to remember that while these payments sound exciting, we don't yet have official confirmation of their exact nature or purpose. As responsible citizens and financial planners, 
it's important to approach this news with both optimism and caution. Now that we've explored what these payments might represent, let's talk about who might be eligible to receive them. Based on the information we have, it appears these payments are targeted at CPP recipients and Canadian seniors. However, let's break this down further. The Canada Pension Plan covers almost all working Canadians, but there are different types of CPP benefits. These include the Retirement Pension, Post-Retirement Benefit, Disability Benefit, Survivor's Pension, and Children's Benefit. It's possible that all CPP recipients might be eligible for these payments, but it's also conceivable that they might be targeted at specific groups within the CPP system. For example, the payments could be focused on retirees over a certain AGGG, 70 or 75, those receiving the CPP Disability Benefit, or survivors who are receiving the CPP Survivor's Pension. To check if you're currently receiving CPP benefits, you can log into your My Service Canada account online or review your bank statements for deposits from the Government of Canada. When we talk about Canadian seniors, we typically refer to individuals age 65 and older, but sometimes benefits are available to those as young as 60. Here are some factors that might influence eligibility age. Most likely, you'll need to be at least 65 years old, but there's a possibility the age threshold could be lower for these specific payments. Residency, you'll probably need to be a Canadian resident, and some benefits require you to have lived in Canada for a certain number of years after turning 18. Income, many benefits for seniors in Canada are income tested, so it's possible these payments could be targeted at low or middle income seniors. And other benefits, your eligibility might be tied to whether you're receiving other benefits like old age security or the guaranteed income supplement. It's important to note that there's often significant overlap between CPP recipients and Canadian seniors. Many seniors receive both CPP and OAAs, and some also receive GIs. It's possible that the three payments we're discussing could be distributed based on different criteria. For example, the $2,600 payment might be for all CPP recipi recipients, the $1,650 payment could be for seniors receiving OAS, and the $900 payment might be targeted at GIs recipients. Remember, this is speculation based on how similar benefits have been structured in the past. We'll need to wait for official announcements to know the exact eligibility criteria. While we don't have specific details yet, there are some steps you can take to be prepared. Ensure your information is up to date with Service Canada. This includes your address, banking information, and any changes in your circumstances. Check your My Service Canada account online. This is where you'll find the most up-to-date information about your benefits. Keep an eye on official Government of Canada websites and announcements. Any new benefit or payment will be communicated through these channels. If you're unsure about your status or eligibility for existing benefits, consider calling Service Canada or speaking with a financial advisor who specializes in retirement planning for Canadians. Now that we've covered the potential nature of these payments and who might be eligible, let's talk about how you might receive these funds if you qualify. In Canada, government benefits are typically distributed in one of two ways, direct deposit or checks. Direct deposit is the fastest and most secure way to receive payments. If you're already receiving CPP, OAs, or other government benefits via direct deposit, it's likely these new payments would be deposited directly into the same account. While less common now, some individuals still receive their benefits by check. The information suggests these payments will be coming on July 1st. However, it's important to note a few things. July 1st is Canada Day, a national holiday. Banks are closed on this day, so the actual deposit might occur on the next business day. Sometimes, large-scale payments are staggered over a few days or weeks to manage the load on the banking system. Don't be alarmed if you don't see the deposit immediately on July 1st. If you receive your benefits by check, it might take a bit longer for the payment to reach you due to mailing times. To ensure you receive these payments if you're eligible, here are some steps you can take. Verify your information. Make sure Service Canada has your current address and correct banking details. Set up direct deposit if you haven't already. It's faster, more secure, and ensures you get your benefits. Even if there are postal disruptions, check your account around July 1st and in the days following. Be patient as large-scale government payments can sometimes take time to process, but and watch for official communications as the government will likely send out information about these payments through mail, email, or both. If you believe you're eligible but don't receive a payment, don't panic. Wait a couple of weeks as payments might be staggered. Check your My Service Canada account for any notices or information about the payments. If you still haven't received the payment after a reasonable time, contact Service Canada. 
they'll be able to check your eligibility and status. Remember, it's always better to be proactive when it comes to your benefits. Keeping your information up to date and staying informed about changes to government programs can help ensure you receive all the benefits you're entitled to. Now that we've covered the basics of these potential payments, let's discuss how they might fit into your broader financial picture, especially when it comes to retirement planning. First, it's important to remember that these payments, while substantial, are likely one-time occurrences. They shouldn't be factored into your long-term financial planning as recurring income. Instead, think of them as unexpected windfalls that can help boost your financial security or allow you to address specific needs. Here are some ways you might consider using these funds start or replenish an emergency fund, pay down high interest debt, make necessary home repairs or modifications for better accessibility, address healthcare costs not covered by your provincial health plan, or invest for future use if your immediate needs are met. It's crucial to consider the potential tax implications of these payments. While we don't have specific details, here are some general points to keep in mind most government benefits are considered taxable income, meaning you may need to report these payments on your tax return. Depending on your overall income, receiving these payments could push you into a higher tax bracket for the year. For seniors receiving GIs, a large one-time payment could affect your eligibility for the following year, as GIs is based on your previous year's income. If you're considering investing the money, remember that different types of investments have different tax treatments. Receiving these payments could potentially impact your eligibility for other income-tested benefits. The guaranteed income supplement is recalculated each July based on your income from the previous year, so a large one-time payment could reduce your GIs for the following year. Many provinces offer additional benefits for low-income seniors, which are often income-tested and could be affected by a significant one-time payment. If you're receiving any subsidies based on your income, such as for housing or care, a large payment could potentially affect your eligibility. While these payments are likely one-time occurrences, they provide an excellent opportunity to reassess and potentially improve your long-term financial security. Consider reviewing your budget, reassessing your investment strategy, updating your estate plan, planning for potential long-term care needs, and seeking professional advice from a financial advisor who specializes in retirement planning for Canadians. Now that we've covered the financial planning aspects, let's discuss some practical ways to make the most of these potential payments. Remember, personal finance is just that personal. What works best for you will depend on your individual circumstances, needs, and goals. Before deciding how to use these funds, take some time to assess your current situation and prioritize your needs. Consider making a list of urgent needs e.g., essential home repairs, critical medical expenses, important but non-urgent needs e.g., updating appliances, dental work, and wants or nice-to-haves e.g., travel, gifts for grandchildren. This exercise can help you allocate the funds in a way that addresses your most pressing concerns first. Instead of using all the money for one purpose, consider splitting it among different priorities. For example, you might use 50% for immediate needs or debt repayment, save 30% for future expenses or emergencies, and allocate 20% for something enjoyable or to improve your quality of life. This balanced approach can help you address current needs while also planning for the future. If you have high interest debt, such as credit card balances, using some of these funds to pay it down can save you a significant amount in interest over time. This can improve your overall financial health and free up more of your regular income for other needs. Consider using some of the money to invest in your health and well-being. This could include scheduling preventive medical checkups, purchasing better quality food, joining a fitness class, or buying equipment to help you stay active and healthy at home. Investing in your health now can potentially reduce healthcare costs in the future and improve your quality of life. If your immediate needs are met and you have some emergency savings, you might consider investing a portion of these funds. Speak with a financial advisor about options that align with your risk tolerance and financial goals. This could help your money grow over time, providing additional financial security in the future. Remember, it's okay to use a small portion of unexpected funds for something enjoyable. Perhaps you've been putting off a small trip, or there's a hobby you've wanted to pursue. Allowing yourself a little indulgence can be good for your mental health and overall well-being, especially after the challenges of recent years. If you're in a position to do so, consider using some of the funds to help family members or contribute to causes you care about. This could include setting aside money for grandchildren's education, helping adult children with a down payment on a home, or donating to a charity that's meaningful to you. Such gestures can provide a sense of purpose and legacy. 
Lastly, use this opportunity to review and update your overall financial plan. These payments provide a great chance to reassess your financial situation, update your budget, and perhaps set new financial goals. Consider working with a financial advisor to ensure your plan is comprehensive and aligned with your current circumstances and future objectives. As we wrap up this video, I want to emphasize how important it is to stay informed about changes to government benefits and programs. These potential payments of $2,600, $1,650, and $900 could make a significant difference in the lives of many Canadian seniors and CPP recipients. While we're excited about this news, remember that we're still waiting for official confirmation and details. In the meantime, take this opportunity to review your financial situation, update your information with Service Canada, and consider how you might use these funds if you're eligible to receive them. Whether you decide to address immediate needs, pay down debt, invest for the future, or a combination of these, the key is to make thoughtful decisions that align with your overall financial goals and improve your quality of life. Remember to keep an eye on official government channels for more information about these payments. We'll be sure to update our channel with any new details as they become available. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more updates on Canadian financial matters and retirement planning tips. Thank you for watching and here's to a potentially brighter financial future for Canadian seniors and CPP recipients. Stay tuned, stay informed, and take care.